My name is Alex Dorge and I'm an Ansible specialist and I'm going to be walking through constructed inventories that were released as part of the Ansible Automation Platform 2.4. So what is a constructed inventory and what isn't it? So first off, a constructed inventory is not a replacement for your dynamic inventories that are pulling from your source of truth with all of your virtual machines, your networking devices and things like that. It is actually though a successor to what we call smart inventories. So if you ever tried to work with smart inventories in the past, you probably noticed some challenges setting up the different filters or just the fact that groups didn't exist in any way, shape or form within smart inventories. This obviously had some challenges associated with it as you looked into, well, all of my group variables are leveraged for connection bars for my networking devices or for my Windows hosts. So you had to rework a lot of things in order to make those smart inventories work. Constructed inventories is that logical replacement for them, which allows you a lot more control over really what's created. So in this, it leverages that same inventory plugin source variable nature that you're used to with all of the other dynamic inventories that exist today. So this lets you define the specific groups that you create in addition to the ones that already exist in those inventories, as well as compose specific variables as you go through this process. So you can select the exact inventories that you want as input for this constructed inventory. So maybe I have a VMware inventory and Azure inventory and a Red Hat virtualization inventory. I can select only those three as inputs for this constructed inventory. So this works for both, maybe you've got separate development, test and production or different hypervisors. It gives you that flexibility to only select the inventories that you want to merge into this constructed inventory. And as I said, this includes the existing groups that are part of this, as well as those group variables. So if you've already set Windows connection variables or if you've already set networking connection variables at the group level, those do get transferred in to this constructed inventory. So it requires a lot less rework than smart inventories in many cases required. So let's look at an example source variable list for a constructed inventory. Again, this is very basic, but this is showing just the different capabilities that exist. And if you notice, many of these pieces are exactly the same as the source variable section for a VMware inventory or an Azure inventory. So the plugin in this case is ansible.builtin.constructed. I've set strict to false. All that means is if a particular variable or group can't be created because it has a none issue, it will just ignore it rather than failing on the error. So it gives you again that flexibility. And then I can compose whatever any variables that I want, either combining existing variables, setting things. So maybe I just want to create a variable that says this is a composed inventory or this is my overall inventory for production. It gives you that flexibility. Then from the groups portion, this leverages, you know, Jinja variables. So in this case, I can set, you know, create a web servers group based off host names that start with web, create a development group based off tags that exist in EC2 or maybe I want to create a private only group because I don't have public DNS names or IP addresses defined. It gives you that flexibility and key groups remain exactly the same as they do for those dynamic inventories as well, where I can take either host facts if I've already set facts and cache them, or I can obviously use the existing information from those hypervisors like the availability zones or regions as they exist. So let's dive into a constructed inventory and see what it looks like and see how I can leverage it within my environment. So let's look at how I can get access to create those constructed inventories. So as you can see, I'm already logged into my automation platform, the dashboard. I'm just going to go to inventories and under that add section, you can now see the add constructed inventory. So obviously I still need to have existing inventories, whether they're static or dynamic inventories. So I have quite a few from, as I said, Azure, Red Hat virtualization, and I have a VMware inventory as well. I'm going to combine them all into a constructed inventory. And as you can see in my Red Hat virtualization inventory, I already have a number of groups and inside one of these groups, I just put in a dummy variable so you can see that this gets transferred between the dynamic inventories that exist into the constructed inventory. So I've already got a constructed inventory that I created conveniently called web app raw constructed, and I've already set up some limits. So let's walk through what this looks like. So inside this inventory, as per usual, I set an organization, I can assign an instance group for these to run against, and I can select what input inventories are leveraged. So this just sets when it's doing that search to combine, these are the only inventories that will be pulled in. As you can see, I have quite a number of other ones that exist, but I don't want to leverage them for this constructed inventory. I can also set a limit. So this limit can either be from existing information in those inventories. So these groups actually exist in the inventories that I'm pulling from, or as you can see, I'm creating a group called rel seven only. I could actually set that as my limit. 
So it gives you the flexibility to do both depending on how you're trying to construct your inventory. So in this case, I'm using that ansible.builtin.constructed plugin. I have strict to set to false, and I want to create a group called rel7 only, in this case using the template variable that Red Hat virtualization populates, and I'm looking in this case for my rel7 shadow man template. So obviously this would only pull in rel7, not my rel8 template. Conveniently, I've got two hosts that are getting pulled in for this. So I can see inside the hosts, this only applies to two of the hosts that exist in my entire inventory, but all of the groups themselves actually get pulled in as well. So despite the fact that I didn't define 49 groups, it does pull in 49 groups worth of information. So I can see that tag a door that I talked about, and you can see the variable itself actually got pulled in as well. So I don't have to re-enter this information inside the constructed inventory. I can just leverage it based on what already exists in those. So that, again, this is great for different variables that may exist in those inventories, particularly connection vars. So I don't have to worry about resetting them or creating a separate smart inventory if I have multiple VM types or VMs and networking devices, I can finally manage it all in a single instance. And then from the actual group that I created, you can see that rel 7 only group got created. So this exists just like any other inventory. So I can assign this to job templates just like I can anything else. So again, this is a great way to combine inventories together, but have that variability to custom define additional groups or additional host variables that wouldn't exist otherwise. So it's a lot more flexible than smart inventories. And I would recommend converting any smart inventories that you have today into this constructed inventory type. So where can you go next? There's a blog that the Ansible team put out that walks through this constructed inventory. So it's got several examples as well. And always I like going to the docs themselves. So it actually has the example that I used in this discussion for that in inventory plugin. So it gives you all the different options and lets you start constructing your own. Again, start simple. The easiest way is to pick your inventories. Don't really add in any limits. Don't add any additional groups or keyed groups. Just pull it in, see what's there, and then start adjusting. And again, this can be a good shift away from smart inventories as you look into having more flexibility with how automation goes against these inventories that you're creating. So thanks again for taking the time to look a little bit more into constructed inventories and how you can leverage them in your environment today. Click the image on the left to watch another video or click my picture on the right to subscribe.